Welcome back, extraordinary viewers. This time on the bench, we've got that mystery watch rebuild. I'm going to start by putting in the keyless work screw. You guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this channel. Uh, please, it helps me out. Um, this is going to be the keyless works bridge. It goes in, I just want to see if it goes in like, yeah, it goes in this way. So I'm now get those two keyless gears on there first. Um, you can find a lot of these watches too uh, at Tequid One on eBay. Um, I sell a lot of these, so do check that out if you're an eBayer. Tequid One, T Q U I D One. There's the keyless bridge going in nice and snug. Oops. that sound all right that's the keyless works the working fine looking beautiful all that perlage let's lube these up with a little bit all that perlage is coming out well so that's the keyless works we'll put on the barrel bridge after i lubricate the barrel bridge post and once i screw down this barrel bridge on this lovely perlaged base. I'll be able to put in the crown gear with the crown gear screws and the click wheel. Everything's lining up. All right. Now here's the crown wheel and the crown wheel screw has a couple of holes in it. And when those are, sorry about the finger, those are lined up, they actually take two small screws themselves. And that was how the old watches would keep the crown wheel from turning itself loose. If that screw is regular threaded instead of reverse threaded, then the, that washer can come loose just by the motion of the watch. So this is how they pin that washer in place with these tiny, tiny screws. Fussy, very effective. In the newer watches, what they've done is they've put a reverse threaded screw on that. Usually has a number of striations on it, just to indicate it's reverse thread. Now this is the click wheel. Again, I'm sorry about the focus. Well, this won't happen again. Uh, on other videos this is a click wheel washer it looks like it's got the same situation where it's got a couple of screws that are driven through it but it doesn't that all lines up that's perfect that's putting a load on the gear train and so this is the back plate with all of the pivot points in it look at the perlage on that it's just a gorgeous watch it's what drew me to it in the first place i believe it's swiss manufacturer that's what somebody said to me um, from probably late 1800s, early 19s, turn of the century. Um, you can see the it's just machined so beautifully that the pieces, they really fit snugly. There it is right there. Now I'll screw that in and that'll give all of the pivot points to the train that I put in on the other side for the third and fourth wheel, the escapement wheel, and the pallet bridge are all in that one little piece that gets screwed on so it could be replaced if any of those pivots wound up getting damaged. All right, this watch was made to be worked on. Um, again, look at all of the detail. All that was done by hand. It's even on the barrel bridge. I mean, on the barrel. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway, glad to bring it back to its former glory. This, as you remember, was just a complete mess. And uh, we cleaned it up, cleaned every single pivot with the pith wood. Now, this has got a very interesting arrangement. The pallet, um, not the fork side, but the other side, you can see lines up with the pivot for the escapement wheel. Uh, which means that the escapement wheel has to go on first 
and then the palette I'm just fitting it to make sure that that's the right orientation um, lubricate all of the pivot points before I go in there so that I don't forget to pivot I'm sorry, so I don't forget to oil one uh, very common when you're assembling it to forget which ones you've oiled and which one you haven't that's why I go ahead and just oil all of them very very lightly here's the escapement wheel that's got to go in first before the palette gets dropped in um, you can see that it's very very finicky and tight tolerances all of this was machined by hand not that somebody did this with a hand tool but that the machine they were using was being guided by hand there was no CNC this was a closely guarded secret out of Switzerland a lot of the machines that make these parts uh, were not shown to any of the general public very closely guarded secret Switzerland wanted to own the watch trade uh, which they did they took it from the US which used to make all of the finest watch mechanical movements all right if you uh, see right here I've got the uh, pallet bridge going on and uh, I've got the escapement wheel lined up in the correct place um, there it is right there and of course I do not want to tighten anything down until I've got everything lined up because it is a good way to crush either the pivot or to bend the end of the gear itself um, and there it is I've pressed it into place yep a little close examination here exactly so that's exactly where we want it so I can also put in the uh, the bridge for the escapement wheel at the same time again just checking everything as I press down even harder to make sure that it seats on both pivot points before I screw it down and I want that pallet to be completely engaged in both pivot points before I screw anything down Alright. Okay. Time to move on. Where do the screws go? Alright, here's the escapement bridge, and it'll allow me to anchor that to its pivot points before I put in the other wheels the second third fourth wheels and you can see it's not lined up okay sometimes I have to take this under high magnification to see if the pieces are lining up or to get them to line up before I screw them down so everything here is lined up the pallet was first I haven't I haven't screwed down the pallet yet but I'll do that now I just wanted to screw down the escapement wheel first because the pallet fork does go around it as we saw very strange but usual I've seen it before on many watches this is a very small version of that all right so i do sell these watches on ebay um under t quid one and uh that helps me to i have to unfortunately lift that up to get the the gear underneath that bridge there's a very unique wrap around bridge style another thing that attracted me to this watch was the wraparound balance bridge uh, the gear train and the pallet fork bridge and and the make a circle around the balance all right here's the third wheel here's the second wheel 
make sure I lubricate that before I put that in. And there it is right there. Line everything up so that I can get this bridge, this drivetrain bridge to hopefully fall onto all these pivot points accurately the first time. Um, if you line them up this way first, where they're all sitting perpendicular to the main plate as much as you can, then when you put the bridges in, the bridges that cover multiple pivot points, a lot of times they'll fall into place pretty easily. Now that went in pretty easily. We'll screw that guy down. There, right on. Okay. So, checking again to make sure that the resistance is minimal on these pivot points. And here's the drivetrain bridge. And uh, it's hard to get these pivot points to all line up at the same time but sometimes as I said if you get them right early uh, the bridge will just did that just drop on there I think that that just I think I got it first time that's pretty remarkable that's pretty remarkable all right let's put some screws in here and see if that actually is Yeah, that looks like that's going into place. Checking the gears. Oh. Yeah, that one wasn't in place. All right. That's all of them. In place, I had to do that under magnification. Sorry. So the whole drivetrain now is putting power from the main. That's exactly what we wanted. All right. Well, we've established that the entire drivetrain is free and clear um, all the way down to the fork end of the pallet, uh, through the gear train, through the um, escapement wheel, the second wheel, the first wheel, and the uh, crown gear. Um, you can pretty much tell that's the entire watch and uh, it cleaned up beautifully just the perlage work and the different finishes. Now this balance has such a big balance wheel that it goes underneath that second wheel and I use my finger alongside of the movement as I do this because I do not want that balance cock to fall off the stand and drag the uh, hairspring with it because invariably that misshapes the hairspring and oh, all right, oh yeah. You know that this is one of the coolest things about this hobby is that it's a lot like finding an old barn find car and you know taking it home taking it apart cleaning the whole thing and then turning the key to see if it'll start you don't know if it's going to start until you do that and these things when they start do you realize you brought back something from abuse to the thing of beauty is that it started as and all that effort that all these craftsmen did to f oh mm, little air it wants to move mm, oh it's the indicator the indicator isn't isn't centered there it is and i usually put it just at center so that i can try and see what the watch completely unadjusted will run at fast or slow look at that look every surface gleaming those had to be cut and then finished after being drilled i mean it's just look at it run amplitude is just fantastic on that all those weights on the outside of the balance act as a there's a huge weight that's spinning around those very tiny axles and those jewels. Swiss movement, I'm told, turn of the century. 
I would love you guys to tell me what you think. All right, I did want to clean and oil this bottom capsule for the balance. And now that that pivot plate is in place, I can do that very easily. You can see it's just the end jewel capsule right on this holder that is screwed down with this tiny screw. A little bit of oil exactly in the center of that capsule. And then the capsule can go right into its amazingly fitted location and get screwed down with that tiniest of screws. There it is. There you go. A couple turns on that smallest of screws. You can see even the back of the barrel has been perlaged. The entire, and this is all under the face when the watch is assembled. You don't see this. Give it a couple of winds now that everything is in place. And we can see that amplitude is just amazing. Perfect. Now we've got to put the main shaft in that goes all the way through the movement then holds the cannon pinion which drives the hands that is just too pretty all right that goes right through there after being a little oiled and i've done a couple of videos on how to extract and replace that cannon pinion right there you can see the enclosed balance is, again, just beautiful and difficult. That was a very, very well-machined watch. As I say, during the time, that must have been one of the high-end watches. You know, only the wealthiest could afford something that small and that well-built. And I'm sure having one of these in the showcase was pretty impressive. So that's the Canon Pinion. And I didn't show you me putting it on because it, I've got other videos of how to do that. And then we've got the face on and the hands on. And this is what it looks like assembled. It is a transformed watch. Absolutely transformed. You can see all the detail that went into um, making this the timepiece that it was. It's a 3 o'clock wind. 